All right, so let's talk about something that I think that will really help to give you clarity on what it looks like to succeed as a top listing agent in your market. Maybe right now you're working with too many buyers. Maybe right now you're not to the point where you are earning a consistent six-figure or multiple six-figure income as a listing agent. The goal of this conversation in today's video is to help you understand and get clear on the next step. So what do I mean by that? Let's jump into this. I want to talk to you about something that Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett talk about all the time, which is inverted thinking. Now, Charlie talks about this publicly all the time. I was fortunate enough to be part of a high-level mastermind where Warren came in person and, and talked to us. And he spent a lot of time on this process in which him and Charlie uh, go through, which again, they call inverted thinking. So how they go about creating success in their businesses. And so let me talk to you about how it works and how we would apply this into the real estate sales space. So how do most agents think about this? Well, the question that they often ask most, which on the surface level of things, seems to actually make a little bit of sense. They say to themselves, okay, well, what is it, Brandon, do I have to do in order to succeed at the highest level in this uh, business? Well, and they start to say, okay, they start to go out there and they go down this path of what do they have to do? What are all the things that I need to learn? What are all the things I need to uh, learn how to, uh, what, do, what do I have to know? What do I have to do? How do I have to act? How do I have to behave? And the thing that I think that Charlie and Warren talks about all the time is this process of inverting that. So check out how this works, all right? So I think this is really, really, really powerful. So in, instead of thinking about, okay, what is it that I have to do to succeed, which for most people is extremely overwhelming. That's why they're searching out answers all the time. An easier way to go about creating success is to invert that and actually ask the question, well, what would it take to fail in real estate? What would I have to do? How would I actually have to behave in order to fail and to not succeed in this business? And what you will find if you go through this exercise is it actually is easier to come up with some of the answers. So let me give you a couple of uh, examples. So number one is to never follow a schedule. So if you are looking or, or seeking out the answers of what would it take to actually fail in real estate, the first thing that you would do is never, ever, ever follow a schedule. You just wake up and wing it. You kind of do whatever you felt like, when you felt like it, you wouldn't have any structure to your day whatsoever. Uh, you would sleep in most of the time. You would come in late if you'd come in at all. And this is how you would behave because this is how most realtors behave. And so you would say to yourself, okay, it's a lot easier for me to find people in this business that are not where I want to be. And so it starts to become easy to say, okay, what are the behaviors to mimic their results. And number one would be to not follow a schedule. Well, uh, what would number two be? Number two would be to change strategies every 30 days. So rather than stick to anything long-term, I would actually just uh, create this world where I have A, creative avoidance, and B, shiny object syndrome. I would bounce from one strategy to the next. I would try things for a very, very, very short amount of time. And if it didn't work in 30 days, I would stop that. I'd stop building that bridge, as uh, Hormozy talks about, and I'd go build another bridge. And I'd have, if I looked in my rear view, uh, rear view mirror, I'd have a bunch of these half-built bridges where I'd constantly start one thing, stop that, start a new thing, stop that, leave this brokerage, go to this brokerage, change model, join a team, leave a team, change where I live, move my family across the country. I just continue to change and chase, change and chase and live this uh, existence of shiny object syndrome where I can't stick to anything. 
because I have no patience. Number three, I would just wait for business to find me. As I'm going through strategy to strategy to strategy, most of those strategies would be built around waiting for something to happen. I wouldn't actually be proactive in my lead generation. I would just wait for business to find me. Number four, I would never work on my sales skills. Even though we are in a skills-based business, we all know that, I would never work on those skills. I wouldn't work on my, my scripts and dialogues. I would never role play. I wouldn't record any of my actual prospecting calls and go back and listen to those. I would never record my listing presentation. I wouldn't go back and listen to that game film so I could grow and get better. I would just never work on my skill set. Number five, I would hang out with losers. What I would do if I wanted to fail in real estate, you're asking the question, what would it take to fail in real estate? This is inverted thinking. I would go find the people that are the lowest producers in my market, the lowest producers in my uh, in my brokerage, and, and that's who I'd hang out, hang out with. I would uh, just do what it is that they do. I would just surround myself with people that are victims, uh, naysayers, excuse makers, and I would just surround myself with these vampires. The next thing is I would eat like shit. I would just fill my face with food that literally was uh, uh, terrible for me, poison. I would drink a ton of alcohol. Uh, I would eat a ton of sugar. Uh, I would folk, I would eat just like absolute, uh, like shit. I would eat like crap. I would never exercise. Number seven, I would never exercise if I wanted to fail in real estate. So that from, from, a, from a health and fitness standpoint, I felt like crap if I wanted to fail. Number eight, I would run away from visibility and accountability. I wouldn't want anybody to see what I was actually doing. I would hide from that. I would want no accountability. I would want nobody holding me accountable to do the things that I actually sought out to do. I'd actually run the opposite direction. This is what most real estate agents do right now. They don't want any actual visibility into the truth because we can't face that reality. And I don't want anybody holding me accountable because, Brandon, let's face it, that's why I got into this business is to be my own boss. I don't want any accountability. Okay, got it. Number nine is I would never study the market or preview any property. So I wouldn't know the market stats every month. I wouldn't know. I would never go and look at active inventory as it hits the market in real time. And I wouldn't have my finger on the pulse. And then number 10, I'd have no client experience SOP. So I'd have no standard operating procedure when it comes to my client uh, delivery. So every time I, if I got a new client under these circumstances, I would, uh, I just kind of wing it. I wouldn't have any systems. There'd be no processes. Every client would get a completely different experience. I'd react to everything. And so uh, that client probably wouldn't have the best experience and I wouldn't have any systems in place, all right? So these are just some examples. So then what do actual top listing agents do that's different? Well, we take these, these things as an example, and then we start to invert them, all right? So we look at, okay, we it's easy for us to find the actions and behaviors of those that don't win in this business, and then we invert that, okay? So we just went through that exercise of what would it take to fail in real estate? That actually is pretty simple. We have those on the left-hand side. And then on the right side, we now get the clarity that we want that sometimes we're blinded, uh, blinded to. It's like we cannot find this path towards success until we invert what it takes to fail. And this is what's so genius about what Charlie Munger and Warren Buffett talk about. You see, it was easy for us to come up with all of the ways in which to fail. And then if we invert that and we look at the opposite of that, wow, we actually create a success formula. So in other words, if we look at the 10 things we just uh, outlined, we call it the failure formula, never follow a schedule, what would the opposite of that be? Well, of course, that would be to create and follow a structured daily schedule where when you woke up in the morning, you knew exactly what you were gonna do, when you were gonna do it, and you actually had a system to your day. So you were able to become more productive, more efficient, more effective. And so the next thing, you, instead of changing strategies every 30 days, you'd actually build this stick to this self-discipline to stick to one thing 
so that you can actually succeed in that one thing. Because why? What do we know? That all strategies work. Whether you're doing, whether you have an outbound approach, which is what I coach to, or whether you have uh, a referral partner approach, uh, uh, you're you're buying leads, you're doing open houses, you have an uh, in a paid inbound approach where you're doing mass advertising. It all works. We know it all works. There are agents in every market, yours and mine, that succeed with inside of all of those lead generation strategies. So it's not the strategy that that determines our success or failure. It's the character trait which we need to stick to one thing, execute on one thing to make that one thing successful before we start to diversify. Well, rather than waiting for business to find us, we'd actually, I know it's crazy, we'd actually prospect daily. Every day, we would proactively initiate conversations with our ideal client avatar. We wouldn't just wait for those people to find us, we would go and find them. Instead of never working on our sales skills, we just do the opposite. We would practice and record our calls every day. We would practice and record our actual listing presentations with real clients. And we'd come back and we'd actually break it down. We'd actually step on the scale, face reality. What is it that my my clients hear me saying? What do they see? What do they hear? And I go back and watch the game film, listen to the game film, and I improve. Rather than hang out with losers, I surround myself with top talent. You see, the goal is to find yourself in a situation where you're surrounded with people that are producing at a level that you simply are are not. Why? Because it, uh, just by surrounding yourself, you all know the, the, the phrase, right? Uh, show me your five best friends and I'll show you your future. You've heard that a million different times. Well, it is true. If you are starting to hang out with people that produce at a level that is much higher than yours, you can't help but then to increase your production. Birds of a feather flock together. Next, instead of eating like crap, we're going to eat a clean diet. So we start to burn clean fuel. We still have. We start to build better, stronger uh, mental discipline, mental focus mental clarity. We have now the energy to go out there and build a big business. Same thing with not exercising. We now prioritize daily exercise over every single thing else. Nothing is more important than our health. And only somebody of healthy mind and body can build a healthy business. Rather than run away from visibility and accountability, we seek out coaching We seek out high levels of accountability. We seek out the people that are willing to hold us accountable, call us out on our BS so that we can produce at a higher level. Well, let me just ask you a simple question. If you were to do a push-up when no one's looking versus doing a push-up on stage in front of 10,000 people, which push-up is better? The one with visibility. So top performers seek that out on a daily basis. When low performers, they run away from that. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want anybody to know the truth. They want to put on a front like they're successful, but they have no interest in actually being successful. Rather than never studying the market, we study the market stats every 30 days. We preview every new listing that hits the market. What do I mean by preview? We walk through the property. We schedule an agent preview so that we have our finger on the pulse of the market. And then lastly, rather than never operating from a client SOP, we have and we document our SOP for everything. We've got a system for every time we list a new property. We have a system for every time we get a new offer. We've got a system for every time we put a property under contract. We have a system for every time we get a clear to close. We've got a system for every time we close a client and what happens with our communication when that person goes into our raving fan club. We have a standard operating procedure for the entire business because we run it like an actual business. And so what is the point of this video? The point of this video is to do exactly what we just did, is to kind of go through this exercise on your own and say, if I'm not where I want to be, let me outline, uh, let me invert this. Let me outline what it would take for me to continue to go down this path and not be where I want to go. And after you've gone through that, I promise you what will happen is this. What I promise you 
will happen is that you get the clarity that you need on what it is that you have to do to start creating the, the, the success that you want. And so I'll leave you with this. If you're to the point where you want support and you want, uh, you're ready to have somebody in your life hold you accountable to teach you the tactics and strategies to start building a listing-based business uh, in your market, well, let's have a conversation about working together. I will put a link right in the description, right underneath this video. Feel free to click it. You could pick any day and time that works for you. We can have a simple conversation and find out if it makes sense to work together or not. So hopefully today's video made sense and uh, let me know what questions you have and I'll see you in the next one real soon.